How exciting. So today I have a house visit with a family and their three month old schnauzer. They're having the typical puppy issues, but today's class is going to be focused on housebreaking. What to do, what not to do, and the very best approach. This approach works best if you have a clean puppy. And what I mean by this is a puppy that does not want to soil their kennel. If you have a puppy that is soiling his kennel, this approach may need some tweaking for it to work, but it will work in time. Housebreaking takes time, guys. Yes, so a three-month-old puppy still has a good amount of time before they're fully house trained, but you can make it happen. The purpose of this video is to teach your dog how to hold it. Hey, what is her name? Gigi. What, Gigi? Yeah. Oh, how cute. Hi, Gigi. Okay, and remind me, she's three months old, yes? Yes. Okay, she's doing good. So we've been out here maybe two or three minutes, and you're saying when your daughter is out here, it takes her a little longer to go potty. And you know what? There's a stranger out here, too, that smells like dogs. So she's actually doing pretty good. And she's, the, all the little running around, like the little zoomies she has, it's just happiness. Yeah. She's excited. She, she's very, she's a little hyper dog. Sometimes she runs around really fast and then. Does she? Yeah. Let me walk over here so she'll follow me over here. And where does she normally go potty? She poops. Good, good, good. Time. That's great. And okay. Then she'll pee around so here. she's pooing over there. That's awesome. Listen, and how often are you picking that up? I'm not. You need to because let me tell you what's going to happen. Yeah. If you if she's out of my, she's a clean dog. Yeah. It's a blessing that she's coming over here by it's herself. Yeah, so true. what you should do is keep it picked up because if you don't keep it if you let me tell you this way. If you keep it picked up, eventually maybe she'll just start going poo in that corner over there and you gotta keep it picked up. If you don't keep it picked up, she's going to stop going poo here and start pooing all over the yard. Okay. Kinda like listen, I don't wanna be gross, yeah, but I'm gonna have to you are gonna make me go there. Okay. Yeah, in public, there's five stalls. Four of them are dirty. You go to the one, yeah, you see what I mean? Okay, the dog okay, is the yeah. same way. Do you yeah, know what I mean? Right I can't see it because it's so there. little. Yeah. yeah, it's itty bitty though. But this is the thing. I can't see it. But if you keep it clean, and then what I would recommend is keep it keep it clean. And then the first few few days that you pick it up, maybe put a, put a couple of the little Tootsie Rolls in that far back corner over there. And then you're gonna you're gonna have a little dog that's only gonna go poo over there. So when you have get-togethers and stuff, nobody's finding it between their shoes. And okay. do you see what I mean? Yeah. Because listen, she's gonna grow a little bit more, so they're gonna grow. Yeah. They won't be as tiny forever, right? Okay. So we did start picking them up, but I okay. gotta see it. But listen, this is a, it's rare that so very few dogs. Oh, same that, spot. that's very very few dogs do that. Especially and more often than not, it's big dogs, not little dogs. Okay. So that's that's like let's call it a double luck lucky rare event that you have on your hands there and she good sit good down she's really pretty man yeah she's really cute yeah but i need her to go potty we've been out here we've been out here oh, at least uh at least five minutes yes yeah enough. okay so while we're out here waiting what are your goals what are your goals training wise uh, yes for the potty is that the main thing we want to focus on yeah today to do it inside i don't know how to stop her we we started yeah. giving her a little treat, but I don't know if that works. It might work. I mean, yeah, listen, uh, uh, good down. What what works with one dog might work with another dog. What, what doesn't work with another dog uh, may not work with any dog, but with some very rare dogs it will. So it just depends. I'm going to go over just uh, I'm going to go over a, a very basic structured regimen for you. Okay. So this is what we want. Good, 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 good. Her coming out. Let's ignore her, though, okay? So really quickly, yes? The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do from now on whenever you bring her out here to go potty is close that door behind you. Okay. Come out here and give her five minutes. If you want to, stay there inside that while you watch her while she's out here for five minutes by herself. In a perfect world, you'd be standing out here. And listen, you're gonna stand out here and you're going to be very quiet the entire time. Okay, I haven't been doing that. I know you haven't been. Yeah, not everybody. And, and listen, I'm going to be one of the few trainers that's going to tell you differently, yes? So really, really quickly, we're going to ignore her until she starts to go potty. So while I'm talking to you all, if I see her go potty, I'm going to interrupt my own talking, and I'm going to acknowledge her. Okay. Okay? So let's start off by closing that door, please, if that's possible, yes? And if, if you have to grab her and pick her up, grab her and pick her up and put her out here. And don't talk to her at all, please. So again, the number first rule is when we come out here, no talking to her. The very first thing, the only thing we say to her is good potty, good potty, good potty. 
when she finally starts going potty. While she's doing it? When she starts. Okay, when she starts. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So really quickly, this can fail for you because again, like the gym has failed, I failed the gym. It's not that the gym has failed me, yes? Yeah. So don't give up. Okay. If, listen, do you understand that if I took her with me, it's not gonna be smooth sailing for me. She's gonna have accidents, I'm gonna be frustrated. It's gonna happen to me. The difference with me is going to be that I'm going to persist and I'm not gonna give up. Don't give up. Okay. There's no reason why you should have to spend more money. You can make this happen, yeah. man, I'm telling you. Okay. Now, really quickly though, the first mistake is acknowledgement. Dogs, like children, thrive in a large community of acknowledgement and affection. So number one, so look, number one, look for reasons to acknowledge, right? So I ignore her most of the time. I don't know if I can we, do that. You need to start. I can. We, you need to we start. Need to start doing that. But yes, but look, okay. I just gave you an example of how to give her affection. Yeah. You want to give her a hug and a kiss? Well, then do, find, figure something out that she's good at already and going to excel at, like waiting at the door. Yeah. So then when you close that door, you can turn around, tell her good way, pick her up, and okay. kiss her, hug her. We're going to take her inside, but we're going to do things my way when we take her inside. Okay. And then we're going to go on with this thread. Okay. Now, the other thing is, whenever you guys want her to come to you when you call her, yes? Whenever she bounds towards you, you guys need to get into the habit of looking at her and saying, good, 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 good. Okay. Every time. If she's running towards you and then gets distracted by a butterfly, the moment she gets distracted by the butterfly, stop saying the word, look at that dog. How'd she get in there? <laughs> For the love of goodness, she's smart. There's a, there's Dang it, she done outsmarted us. All right, so we need to fix that so she doesn't do that. <laughs> Talk is smart. Has she ever done that before? No. Wow. I think I caught it on video. How cute. Good, 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 good. Good, good, good. So again, we, we need to do these things. See, and like right there, right? When we opened the door, I probably wouldn't have said, come on. I probably would have just looked at her. And the moment she started running towards it, good, 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 good. I would have started chanting. Okay. Look, but you see how the moment she ran past me, I stopped chanting. So get her into the habit of understanding what makes you happy. Okay. If every time she walks up to you, she puts her paws up, you pick her up or you look at her, she's going to do that to you and your family when she's older. She's going to get bigger. So you see where she just did? She ran up to you and kind of jumped, jumped and, and you ignored it. That's the right thing to do for now. Okay, so remember, the very first step is bringing her outside, giving her up to five minutes to go potty. When five minutes pass, if she has not used the restroom, we need to pick her up, take her inside, and put her in her crate. Oh, okay. And we're going to put her in her crate for a minimum of 30 minutes. Okay. Now, this is important. This will only work if your dog is clean and you told me she doesn't use the restroom in there anymore, right? Mm -hmm. Look at that little crazy dog. How cute. Okay, let's pick her up, please. And let's put her in her crate. So remember, to start off with, from now on, how long are potty breaks? Five minutes. Five minutes maximum. If you go outside and she pees and poops within two minutes, clap your hands, tell her good, 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 come inside and give her a treat. Okay. Give her something special. Okay. Do you see what I mean? Yes. Now, what I mean by, so there's different types of treats, right? There's treats that we use that are just one hitters with, I want another one. Then there's treats that are maybe like, and then there's treats that we give a dog that are like a pig here that maybe take five or 10 minutes. So in that situation, you want to give her the second level type of treat that takes a little bit of, so a pig ear would be too much. Okay. Do you, have you guys given a pig ears or anything like that? No. Yeah. Okay. No. Well, she does need things to chew on, okay? Okay. Now, whether you want to give her pig ears or not, it's up to you. I do give my dogs pig ears, but this is the thing. She needs things to chew on that she can destroy and eat. Okay. So any chew toys that say are, that are indestructible are play toys. But I'm talking about she needs edibles. Okay. What do you got next time? Like, listen, so like, if she was my dog, like, you don't have to follow my, you do talk, talk, do whatever you want to do. But if she was my dog, she, I'd be giving her rawhides, pig ears, a cow hoof, esophagus, turkey feet. Okay. Like animal byproducts for her to chew on. Okay. And destroy. Okay. Okay? So but giving her one of those is too much of a reward. So giving her treat number one where it's a one hitter. No. Okay. 
Yeah. Yeah. Because if you had those, the one that you would like. Yeah. You can have another one. Yeah. Well, those are perfect for training, though. But each one of those has its place in training, okay? Okay. So treat number two, where it's just like, is what you want to do when she comes back in. Okay. Okay? Now, if you're out there and five minutes pass, kind of like we just did now, and she doesn't use the restroom, we're going to bring her inside, we're going to carry her. We're going to pick her up, carry her, bring her inside and put her in the crate for a minimum of 30 minutes. Okay. And then we take her out again? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now repeat what I just said, please. Five minutes, pick her up, oh. put her in there. So this is what it is. You're paying attention because you said pick her up. Yeah. Pick yes. Her up. From now on, walking inside the house is a reward. So we need to make every distinction between them. I like this and I don't like this. I don't personally like the fact that I'm out there sweating like a pig. Five minutes and she didn't go potty. She's running around all over the place. She wasted our time. I mean, not technically because you're paying me and we're here and we're running and we're talking, but you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. What if you got go? Yeah. So. If she doesn't use the restroom outside, if she doesn't produce, we're going to pick her up and we're going to carry her and put her in her crate. One note about putting her in the crate, use the good word theory. So what I mean by that is when you make your daughter put her in the crate, when you put her in the crate, the moment you put her in there, start pushing her in there, say good crate, good crate. When you close the latches, say good crate, good crate. Okay. Whenever you let her out, say good crate, good crate. Okay. So get into the habit of looking for reasons to acknowledge her. So you may not have noticed, but from the very beginning that I've gotten here, every time I've seen her sit or lay down, I say, just sit, get down. Yeah. Start doing that. Okay. All right. Do you see what I mean? Yes. If every time you look in her direction or you see her sit, one of you guys say, good sit, or God forbid, all three of you say, good sit, it's going to make a big difference. She's going to start sitting all the time because she's going to want your attention. See. A dog will go and get something naughty, a pair of socks, some shoes, just to get your attention and be chased. Oh, she does get socks. And let me tell you something. I've learned through experience that the very, the moment a dog grabs a sock, everybody stops paying attention to me and starts chasing the dog. You see what I mean? Yeah. Dogs understand. Dogs learn this behavior because the reality of it is as owners, we're often negligent. And what I mean by this is we don't acknowledge the dogs unless they get into something. Do you know how many times I go to somebody's house and they have a little puppy and the little puppy isn't doing anything but laying down the whole time and being in his little bed chewing on something? Like today, if she would have gone potty, I would have gone and got a pig ear, brought it inside, given it to her. She probably would have gone and laid on that bed and chewed on that pig ear the whole time I was talking. And the whole time I would have been talking, you guys would have paid no attention to her. Because she's out of your way, she's behaving. But a dog values a human's attention. So that's why the dog will leave the pig here and go grab a sock to get attention. Okay. So remember how earlier I was saying, look for, look for things to praise her about? Yes. If you give her a little pig here and she goes to the little bed and starts to chew on it, Every 15 seconds or so, look at her and tell her, good, 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 bad. Walk over there and give her a little scratch. Give her a little kiss. Give her attention when she's settled and chill. Okay. Instead of giving her attention when she's running, acting bad. Okay. Do you see what I mean by that? And let me tell you something. If she's in the crate whining, you've only looked at the crate when she's been whining. Do you see what I mean? Yes. So she, she knows this. I have not looked at the crate when she's whining. I looked at the crate a couple of times when she was quiet. Like right now, good quiet, good quiet. Remember, it's very simple. It's the, it's, the, it's the behavior that you feed and acknowledge that is going to continue to grow. Okay. She's whining, you look at her. In a week, you're like, I don't know why everyone came over. She wanted you to allow her down. Well, <laughs> You're looking at her all day, ignore it. When she gets quiet and has been quiet for 20 seconds, look at her and tell her, good quiet. And right, if you look at her and the moment you look at her, you say, good, she starts to whine, look away, you're disgusted. Ugh. It's a lot of ignoring. Of 
whores. But yeah. that's what her mom will be doing. Yeah. I promise you. Watch a watch a mom with with her litter. Whenever they're behaving good, they're laying down. She's gonna groom them, kiss them, be affectionate with them. When they're being a hot mess, like biting her too hard and all these things, she's either gonna correct them or she's gonna try to ignore them before she finally corrects them. She'll correct them. She'll bite them. But she's gonna try her best. Move out of the way, get up. A dog will move six times, maybe in the seventh time, it's gonna get bit. Did you see what I mean? Yeah. So you just have to acknowledge this behavior. If you start doing what I'm talking about, look, in six or seven months, you'll have a dog who walks up to people and sits in front of them without ever being trained to do it. You've conditioned it. Conditioning is better than training. Condition it. She's young enough to be conditioned. <coughs> Good quiet. Good quiet. Now, really quickly, basics with the crate, yes? In a crate like this, a couple of things that we're doing wrong if we're still house trained. Number one, we want to leave this crate completely empty. You're certain she's not peeing on that bag? I'm certain, yeah. I'm going to sniff it in a little bit because a lot of times dogs are smart enough to know that if they go potty on this, it'll absorb it and they won't necessarily get dirty. Oh, okay. So for now, until she's house trained, this needs to be removed. Okay. The other thing, guys, this is very important, yes? This might be controversial, but it's true. Whenever she's in this crate, it needs to be empty. No chew toys in this crate. Okay. No play toys, nothing else. When she's in this crate, it's not that it's punishment, but it's a time to reflect. It can be used as time out. If you put a bunch of toys in the crate... And things for her to do while she's in there, like every other trainer is going to recommend. I promise you, every trainer is going to recommend this. Got to go to Pet Smart, they're going to recommend this, yeah? If you do what other trainers recommend, you're inadvertently creating a behavior in your dog that requires them to chew on things when they're stressed or anxious about you not being home. So what happens is the very first time you leave the dog out in the house, when you, when you leave, the dog thinks that anything that's out of its place you left for them to chew. If in the beginning, yes, the first eight or nine months of a dog's life, every time they're in their crate, you don't have anything in there for them to do, they learn to go into the crate and just kind of meditate and be quiet and be chill. And they learn to deal with the anxiety of you being gone, separated from the pack by sleeping and kind of like meditating. So when you leave, they automatically realize, oh, they didn't leave these things out for me to chew on. Do you see what I mean? Okay. This crate is, is, is a representation of the house right now. You should give her plenty of chew toys, though. Look, the stick is her own chew toy. She came up with this, yes? Yes. Yeah, this from the yard. Right. That's awesome. So it's, it's an appropriate chew toy, in my opinion. But this, this goes along with my point. She needs things to chew on. I'm going to send you guys a video link that kind of has a little description of the things that she needs to chew on. But she needs at least five different edibles to chew on. Okay. Listen, pig ears and stuff don't last very long. They're going to last longer with her than a big dog, but they're renewables. You've got to keep buying them. The cost of having a puppy. Okay? So we're going to keep this crate open. If she doesn't go potty, when we take her outside, we carry her back inside and we put her in the crate for a minimum of 30 minutes. If she needs to be in there a little bit longer, that's fine. No less than 30 minutes. After 30 minutes... We're going to take her back outside and give her another potty break. Okay. Really quickly, we moved this here just for the video, but where you had it at before by the door is the perfect spot. Good job, okay? So you're going to let her out immediately. Every time you, oh, you let her out of the crate, she needs to go outside. Yeah, we and, do that. And outside, I mean outside of the structure too. Okay. Is that a Florida room or something? What, what yes. can we call that? Perfect. Outside of Florida. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. Every time. And we need to let's staple it or something so she can't get to it. Okay. Because she's defeating our purpose. Okay? And let's prevent. So again, we give her another potty break, another five minutes. While we're out there, we're completely silent. If we see her produce, the moment we see her start squat or start to pee or poop, we look at her and we say, good potty. Okay. If I were you guys, I would use a different word for poo because she can learn to poo on command in the future. Oh, we use potty. The word potty. Right, but yeah. what I'm saying is you can. she's young enough right now to learn to pee on command and poop on oh, command. Maybe. Yeah, so like if you're going to take her for a walk, you can make her drop a little poo before you go for the walk. 
Do you see what I mean? Yeah. The way you do that is by using the good word theory. Every time you see her pee, you say good potty. Every time you see her poo, you say good poo or whatever you want to say. Okay. And she'll understand it. Okay. So if five minutes pass and she uses the restroom, she produces, and you're happy with what she's produced, we let her walk back inside the house, and which is the first reward, right? The second reward is going to be a block of free time. Free time is time that she gets to use around the house. Okay, and at For, that point, then we give her attention or not? If you want to give her attention, so see, that's a really broad question. So the broad answer is no. Okay. But the right answer is yes. But do the things that you need to do to give her attention. Go to the door and praise her when she doesn't come out of it. Okay. But during those 30 minutes, if you're just loving and kissing on her the whole time she's out, you're just making mistakes. Yeah, because we've been doing that. You're making yeah. mistakes. Okay. And let me tell you something. This is the problem. The problem is that they're so cute, it seems fun. But when this dog is full grown, the same behaviors that you think are cute right now are probably going to annoy the heck out of you. Yeah. Do you see what I mean? I'm telling you. Yeah. As she gets older, it's more annoying. Okay? So, if you want to give her attention, yes, that's the time to give her attention. Give her chew toys, and if she grabs her little chew toy and takes it to this bed, give her attention. How do you know she takes it to the bed? She takes it to the bed. That's what dogs do. That's what dogs do? I'm, a, I'm the dog Messiah, that's what I know. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's what she's gonna do. Yeah, she does that. She takes and then reward her. Okay. Right. Every so every time she takes something on the bed, y'all are like, keep watching TV. <laughs> Nothing. You see what I mean? Yeah. We need that when she goes on the bed, say good bed. And then when she lays down, say good bed. Okay. And then get up and come and give her a little hug and a little kiss over here. Like make her feel good about it. Heck. Go ahead and buy another bed or sometimes, oh, you don't even need to buy another bed. You got that bed. Mm -hmm. Slide that bed over there. Maybe like right here. Okay. You see what I mean? Because right there, like nobody's underfoot. She's in the middle of everybody. And can you imagine? Now nah, your goosebumps just thinking about it. She takes her little, her little chew toy, goes over there and sits down right there while y'all are like, oh, man. And then you got so much time, you can reach down and pet her and scratch her by the ear. You can give her a hug and a kiss. One of you guys can slide on the floor with her and hug on her. But you're encouraging cool behavior. Okay. Instead of like only giving her attention when she's running crazy. Okay. Now, there does need to be crazy time, but that needs to be outside. Like running crazy? It's fun yeah. to run crazy. Okay? She does it in here. Yeah. In here, when she does it, ignore her. Don't even say stop doing that or anything. Just ignore it. It'll go away. Outside, when she does it, laugh and act like it's the best thing in the whole world. Okay. See, dogs are like kids. You know, like you know, kids, hey, mom. No, you didn't see me when they're swinging. No, no, no. Look again. Mom, mom. Look. Watch. That's how dogs are. That's how he is. I have dogs. My dogs are trained. Okay, yeah. So you're right. <laughs> but do you see what I mean? Yeah. It's the truth. It just takes, this is why I'm telling you that people fail. This is why I'm videotaping this. Because this is the best way, I think, to educate a dog, but it requires educating the family, and that's the problem. See, in, in my board and train program, it requires less education on your part because we do everything, but we're consistent, and there's no reason why you can't do the same stuff. I'm, spoiler alert, what I'm telling you right now is the first thing I do with this dog if I took her with me right now. I promise you. I'm not messing around. And it's going to be harder for her. Do you know why? Because when I take her outside, there's going to be like eight other dogs wanting to play with her. And she's going to want to play. But guess what? I'm not going to let it break me. I'm going to just persist. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to be more stubborn than her. It works. It works that way. So there's no reason why you can't fail. Don't have this belly. Especially when you're paying for it. All right? So again, we take her outside, she goes potty, we let her walk back inside the house. When she walks back inside the house, we give her a number two type treat, yes? Yes. A couple of chews. If let's say you, you and your daughter happen to be in the same room when you walk in, say, what is her name, Gigi? Look at your daughter and say, Gigi good, go potty, Gigi good, go potty. 
And if your daughter says, Gigi, go good potty, and goes and gives her a number one treat, you're making stuff happen. You're making me think. If you only do it one time, you persist. 10 app crunch is not going to get me anywhere. I'm going to be like 10,000. <laughs> Maybe 30,000. That's what I'm not going to do. <laughs> think about it, yeah? Do that every time. When she goes potty for you guys, you come inside. The first time you go out there and she doesn't go potty and you pick her up and you bring her inside and put her in the kitchen and you go over 30 minutes, she's like, hmm, why was that difference? Oh, okay. So when she does go potty, she is allowed out here? For 30 minutes. Okay. Yes, sir. So it's either 30 out or 30 in? For now. Okay. And I'm going with that because you told me 20 minutes, so it can vary from, you know, from yeah. about the it, it, An hour might be right. I don't know. I'm just going by based on what the clock. Let me tell you something, okay? You taking her out every 20 minutes, it's, it's a, it, it's a good-hearted attempt, but it's potentially the wrong thing to do. Now, what I'm saying to you doesn't mean, everything I'm saying to you doesn't work with every dog. So it might work with you. But remember, dogs are animals of habit, just like humans. If you're taking her outside every 20 minutes, you're not teaching her to hold it. You're teaching her that unrealistically, she's gonna get a shot at peeing every 20 minutes. The purpose here, you know, it's like kids, like I wear diapers up until a mom thought I could, I could hold it on my own. <laughs> right? The per, the, the, so every 20 minutes is like diapers. There's no control. It's just, hey, you're going to go. So what, what I'm trying to teach you guys is control. Good, good, good. Good, quiet, baby. Good, crate. Good, good, good. Good, crate. Good, quiet. Good. Control. Well, he's, I believe her or tame and she's not. For the love of goodness, that's unbelievable. She's not going in there. She okay. So she's a clean dog. You need to follow my guidelines. It's going okay. to work. Okay. Simple. So look, 30 minutes of free time is up. Put her in the crate. So you put her in the crate, yeah? She's in the crate for 30 minutes. After thir minimum of 30 minutes. It could be an hour, two hours, three hours, okay? Once the crate period is over immediately outside again for a potty break, which is going to be five minutes. Five minutes. Okay. From that point in time, she decides what happens, yes? If she doesn't go potty, doesn't produce, and she can, you pick her up, you put her back into the crate for 30 minutes. 30 minutes later, give her another opportunity. So every time she does go potty for you, she's rewarded verbally. She's rewarded physically by being allowed to have her dignity and walk back inside the house. You're giving her a type two reward. And she gets free time. Okay. She doesn't go potty out there, you pick her up. This is the other thing about picking her up. When you go to pick her up, don't go pick her up and kiss her and stuff all over <laughs> you. You're rewarding the hell out of her. Dude, you go out there, you pick her up, and you hold her as if she's got pee and poop on her, like this. Okay. You know, if, if, if your daughter needs to do two hands, but it needs to be uncomfortable. It's not a reward. I'm not saying snatch her up, like, you know, like, yeah. like she's a skunk or something. But again, an uncomfortable little stroll back into the crate. And you're not angry, but you're just not thrilled. 30 minutes. Now here's the thing, yeah? We're gonna go into food and water. Water. From now on, no access to water inside the house at all. Oh. Please. You need to get a larger water container. A litter, a cat's litter box works great. Or get you a bowl, a large one. And it needs to be filled with water. The water needs to be changed like two or three times a day. It needs to be placed right outside of that door. So the crate is here. It needs to be placed right outside of that door. Okay? So you need to have water out there strictly. Because if you, if you, from now on, the only water she knows that exists is right outside of that door, what do you think she's going to do when she's thirsty? She's going to want to go outside? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> If there's strictly water outside when she's thirsty, she's gonna go to the door for water. 
Let's say that she's been at inside here 20 minutes. And all of a sudden she goes to the door because she wants water. Unbelievable. Ideally, you say the word wow, you give her a number one type treat. Boom, you open the door, you let her out. She drinks water. Oh my goodness, now that we're out here, let's go potty. Mm. But you don't say that, you think that. Yeah. So while she's drinking water, you mosey on down to the yard. And you wait, for the moment she stops drinking water, five minutes starts. I'm about to break your heart. If those five minutes pass, and she doesn't use the restroom, even if she comes inside the house five minutes later, she goes outside, pees and poops, comes inside, five minutes later, goes to the door, you let her out, let her drink water. Five minutes pass outside, because now that she's out there, you gotta give her five minutes. Those five minutes pass and she doesn't use the restroom, Good quiet. We pick her up and we put her in here. So if she was outside for five minutes before she went to the door, she done lost 25 minutes. Yeah. But for the love of goodness, if when you're out there, she drinks and she goes out there, I'm gonna get goosebumps. What is gonna happen? What's gonna happen? You go out there, and she follows you out there and squats, and you say, good, put him in this one, good potty. Dang it, you let her walk back inside the house, you give her a type two treat, and a brand new 30 minute block of free time. Mm -hmm. She'll start manipulating you. Instead of trying to manipulate you with stupid stuff, she's gonna try to manipulate her time out. You'll see, a smart dog, if you're consistent, at about 25 minutes, will go to the door. She's gonna pee, because they know that that pee, Buy some time. Okay. She'll figure it out. But you gotta persist and you gotta be stubborn and you gotta stick with it. The three P's. Pee, poop, or pretend. How many dogs pretend like they're peeing in front of me all the time? Because they know that if, and they think I'm stupid. They go out there and squat down. <laughs> Nothing comes out but I'm like, good potty, good potty. Because they know that if I think they pee, they get to hang out. See what I mean? They're smart. And they're not going to pretend that they have something in their bladder. So they'll pee, poop, and pretend. Mark my words, you stick with this, you're going to see her pretend a couple of times for you. She's going to go out there and squat down, and then she's going to be like, oh my god, I can't believe she fell for it. She's going to walk inside happy. But the dog is understanding the relationship and the communication. Okay. How many times a day are we feeding her? Twice. Okay, does she eat both meals? In the morning she eats a little bit, okay. and then she'll finish the rest of the afternoon when I give her her second okay. serving. Okay. Um, but so she that's... doesn't finish it all, she goes back and forth, so I don't know okay. if that's good. She goes so, no, it's not good. We need to cut that out, we need to cut out one feeding. So pick one feeding that you want, Okay. and you need to feed her in the crate. Oh, in there. Yes ma'am, and you need to leave the food down for 15 minutes. Whatever she doesn't eat after 15 minutes, take it away. If you're worried about her eating, then tough it out. She's not gonna starve herself. She'll eat it in time. Listen, if one day you put the food down for 15 minutes and she doesn't eat it and you take it away, and you wait until the next day to put the food down in 15 minutes and she doesn't eat it, you take it away, that third day she's gonna eat it and forever. The dog will learn. If you wanna be kind, I like to be kind. But this is my dog, and I was worried that she wasn't gonna eat it all in 15 minutes. I might go ahead and make a little bit of white rice with a little bit of low sodium chicken broth. You know, like the white five minute Uncle Ben rice? I'm gonna make a little bit of that, keep it in reserve, and just put a little bit of that in her kibble every day. Don't hurt nothing. She's gonna make her love it. Delicious. You put it in there for her. Whatever she doesn't need after 15 minutes, you take away, and you leave her in the crate for an additional 30 minutes. Now, from that point on, you gotta start wondering does she got packages to deliver? That's what you see, those are things I figure out when I take it all with me. So I can't, you gotta figure that out. It'll, but if you do what I'm telling you, and you feed her at the same time roughly every day, she'll start pooping every day at about the same time. And she does that. She poops in the morning and after she eats in the afternoon. She so, poops right away after oh, she eats. Oh my God. So hopefully we reduce one of those poops. And you're almost, you're almost there. Okay. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. 
So then you're rewarding that behavior. Now, this is the tricky part, yes? Let's say you feed her in the afternoon, okay? Feed her in the afternoon, and now you take her outside and she pees, but then you bring her inside. In my opinion, you'd be foolish to let her get free time if she hasn't dropped that poop yet. Be foolish, stick it out. Because right now you still don't know when her poop is gonna start happening. You gotta change some things around. Really quickly about the water, I need to emphasize, it needs to be a large thing of water. It can't be small like those two little bowls that you have there. Those are inadequate. It needs to be big, like a body of water. You see what I mean? Yeah. Puppies, wolves, coyotes, they'll travel miles to get to a body of water. So make her feel as if it's like a body of water. Okay. That's why I said like a cat litter box works good, or a, you know, a big dog bowl for like a big dog, and put it right up there. Okay. You need to change it out at least three times a day because there's a little bit of trees around here, so any critters that drink from that or whatever, she can get sick. So just be on the safe side. I know you got to afford a room, just be on the safe side. You have to be tossed out of your feet. Yeah. Okay. Um, like if you've been gone all day at work, toss it out before you get your access to it. Okay. okay. But it needs to strictly be outside. Okay. Okay? Do you have any questions about that? Uh, when I'm chasing the water, can she be out there with me? No. Yep. If you're using the water from out there, of course. Yeah. 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 Okay. Sure. That's just any any water that's coming from outside associates with going outside for water. Yes, sir. Let's give her another potty break and see what happens. Yeah. So we let her walk outside, or do we carry her? Yes, sir. So you're normally going to be right over here, yeah. Yes. So yeah, go ahead and just uh, see if, if she'll follow you. Let her let her walk. Good, good, good. Good, good, good. Good, good, good. Good, good, good. Pretty girl. So I'm gonna talk just to narrate a little bit, but ideally we'd wanna be quiet. But let me, so technically you already kinda failed, yeah? Because you said, come on, Gigi, like three times since you let her out of the crate. No. Okay. I didn't say anything. The only thing I said was good when she was following it. Good potty. Good potty, baby. Good potty. Good, 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 good. Good potty. Hers pretty and smart. That's my favorite part about you. And you did it with all the distractions and all the barking. Think she got a poo right now? Probably not, huh? Because you're used to her schedule. Let's go inside then. Remember, if she goes to that door within her free time period, and goes outside to go potty, every time she goes potty outside, you reset the 30 minute block of free time for her. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah.